site. King County Metro is taking action after Cairo 7 first exposed dozens of violent attacks against bus drivers. But are their efforts enough? They, they don't seem to understand how important this is. Cairo 7 investigates the ongoing battle over bus safety. The video is just awful, and our reports brought back memories for bus operators attacked on the job. And that includes a woman who told our Amy Clancy she is frustrated Metro hasn't done more 10 years after she was assaulted on the job. He knocked me out. I still have a great big scar on the inside of my lip. Catherine Beatty has no memory of the moments after she was struck multiple times while driving a Metro bus on International Boulevard in Tukwila just after midnight in January of 2010. I was knocked unconscious, so I guess I was kind of going in and out. I feel the pain in my head from the concussion. Cairo 7 was in court when her 14 year old attacker was sentenced to a year in juvenile detention. Sorry for assaulting. Okay. Could you look at me when you say that? That's all I need. Sorry for a sudden. Thank you. On that day, Beatty asked Cairo 7 to hide her identity. <laughs> but after seeing our recent investigations about the ongoing violence against Metro bus drivers <laughs> and passengers, Beatty contacted Cairo 7 and said she has been asking King County for years <laughs> to increase driver safety. You've been fighting this fight for how long? Ever since the, it happened, 10 years. And it has not resulted in any kind of shield for the drivers? No. How do you feel about that? I want to say it angers me, but I think it goes beyond anger. They don't seem to understand how important this is. Driver shields have been installed in buses nationwide and are currently being tested by Pierce Transit. In our earlier reports, Metro Deputy General Manager Terry White told Cairo 7 that King County has been exploring the idea for 10 years, but that none of the options tested so far have been good enough. We don't want to just put something in, find out we did the wrong thing, and now we've, we've costed the system, and we got to pull it out. But had Metro installed shields after Beatty's attack, the drivers in these surveillance videos might have had a wall of protection between them and their attackers. And driver Deloy Dupuy might not have been shot at point blank range while driving through downtown Seattle in August of 2013. Went through my cheek and uh, through my arm, and then he started uh, shooting. And I was bobbing and weaving as much as you can with the seatbelt on and screaming. No, no, no. That shooting prompted renewed calls for some sort of shield or plexiglass cage to protect Metro drivers, going all the way to the top of King County government. There's been a, a discussion over the years about the relative merits of having some kind of encasement around the drivers. However, Executive Dow Constantine said at the time that drivers didn't want them. Because in some cases, the driver wants to be able to move quickly. After Beatty's 2010 assault, Metro did install 30 test shields, and 300 drivers then filled out surveys. According to the transit union, most of them did not want to be enclosed. A change in the relationship between the operator and the passengers that we thought would cause more problems, not solve problems. However, since then, surveillance cameras have now been installed on more than 90% of King County's buses, recording dozens of assaults against drivers within the past two years, as a Cairo 7 investigation revealed. According to King County records, in the past 10 years, nearly 230 assault-related injury claims have been filed against Metro by drivers, leading to payouts of more than $2.5 million. And now, the driver's union does support the installation of shields, according to President Ken Price. You're in that position, vulnerable, and you have no protection. It's the realities of what driving a bus in Seattle has become. The barrier is the safest way to put a plexiglass shield in front of the operator and the assailant. Metro denied Cairo 7's request for an interview for this story. But just within the last few days, a spokesperson shared a statement that appears to signal a change since our September investigation. 
His email states, we've heard the clear request from leadership of our labor partners that they would like Metro to install operator screens throughout our system. So in response, Metro is creating a driver screen program to explore options, assess costs and impacts on drivers and passengers. However, there is no timeline for the project. Did you think our stories were unfair in any way? No. In fact, I don't think they went far enough. For longtime Metro driver and supervisor Kathy Bellapani, promises without action are empty because she believes the fatal shooting of Mark McLaughlin in 1998, the beating of Beatty in 2010, the shooting of Dupuy three years later, and the dozens of assaults captured on surveillance cameras should have made driver safety a priority long before Cairo 7's investigation. Metro and King County think it's bad PR to have those shields. It's more important that they look good than to protect our operators. How do you feel about that? It makes me really angry. What do you think it's going to take for change to be made, possibly the addition of shields? I hate to say this, but I think it's going to take a video of somebody being killed. I, don't, I just don't have much hope, and I don't have much faith in Metro. I asked Dow Constantine's office whether PR had anything to do with King County's decision to install driver's shields or not, and I was told his office is leaving all comments up to Metro. You should know that Beatty and Bellapani were not the only drivers who contacted me. Here are the others, all of them demanding more safety for drivers. In Seattle, Amy Clancy, Cairo 7 News.